Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, uh, I'll show you how I normally come up with an idea, uh, shoot the video, and then edit the video and finally upload it to YouTube. So I'll walk you through it. Let's get started. Okay, starting from my desk. So I use Notion recently. I have started using Notion. So I made like uh, four columns uh, where the first column is just uh, a, a list of ideas uh, that I come up with. That, like whenever I get an idea, I'll just uh, randomly write it down. I mean, note it down. Uh, then the next section is the idea that I am writing on currently that I am writing the script of. So the script is what you see on the right side. Next section is the shooting or editing. The ones that I'm uh, currently shooting or what I'm, ones that I'm currently editing. And the final section is the ones which I've already uh, uh, edited and uploaded to YouTube. Uh, and uh, uh, the ones that I've blogged also. So these are the four uh, sections that I make. So coming to the shooting aspect, uh, I don't have a particular location as such. I'd like to switch uh, switch up the locations. Uh, so sometimes it will be in my room, sometimes it will be in the living room, sometimes it will be in the balcony. I don't like to have a fixed location. And second thing is, uh, I like to use uh, natural light as much as possible rather than artificial light. I mean, even, uh, even though I have the uh, softbox and all that, but I prefer using the natural light because uh, it's personal I like the feel of it better and I'm sorry for all the overexposed areas because I'm shooting in uh, uh, my phone right now the camera I have set up uh, for the shoot I'll just walk you through it okay coming to the setup for today I have set up the uh, camera on the tripod with a lab mic that will connect and uh, that's a chair that I'll be sitting on and that's the whole back background and a little bit of jugaad that I did is that I kept this chair uh, and I kept this, kept this reflector uh, to bounce a little bit of light to one side of my face. And uh, here I have the laptop with the script. So in case if I forget, I'll just come see the script and then shoot the video. So that's the whole setup that I have. And this setup keeps changing. Sometimes I'll shoot in the balcony. Sometimes I'll shoot inside my room, so all this setup keeps changing. If you would like to know the camera that I shoot with and all the gear that I use for recording videos, I've made a separate video about it, uh, about all the camera gear that I used uh, and I've made a blog of it as well. And both of the links I will leave in the description below. So go check that out. So now it's time to shoot the video and after that we'll go to a desk uh, for the editing process. Okay, so we have done uh, shooting the video. Now I'll just copy all the files uh, from my memory card onto my hard disk. Yeah, so these three are the files. Copy, come to my hard disk, travel blocks. I'll create a new folder. So this video that I shot was all about uh, monsoon riding tips. So I'll just name it like that. Copy all the raw files here. So I'll just copy and then we'll resume in Premiere Pro. Okay, so all the raw files have been uh, copied to the folder. Now in go to Premiere. And now coming to the editing softwares, I primarily uh, use Premiere Pro. I've been using it for more than almost four to five years now. I tried switching to Final Cut Pro because I use a Mac and uh, absolutely hated the magnetic timeline. I cannot use it. And uh, I tried switching to DaVinci also. DaVinci is very good, very comfortable for color grading. It is insane. 
but uh, the only thing is because i have been used to premier so much that i want to still continue using premier but for uh, not so heavy duty work like uh, converting long form short i mean videos to short videos and all that i still use davinci and uh, one of the videos where i had to do motion tracking i use davinci because it is very easy to do tracking titles and all that in davinci than in premier because uh, in premier you have to go to after effects which i have no idea of and then you have to come back and all this stuff but uh, davinci everything is in one place so that is very good so i should slowly i mean uh, switch over to davinci but as, uh, as for now i don't want to take take any uh, chances and I, I don't have the time to learn a new software as well so uh, i will stick on to premiere itself <laughs> so now we'll go to new project and uh, we'll just uh, choose the location i like to choose the same location that i have copy the uh, raw files in so that will be monsoon riding tips choose and the title of the project also will name the same done create yeah so there's there's my workflow so first of all i'll import uh all the raw footage that works much on writing tips just a three so now for status what i usually do is i'll just scrub through the raw footage i'll mark the uh end and the beginning and the end points well first let me interpret footage to the color space rec 709 i'm not going to get into details of how to use premiere pro and all that you will find plenty of tutorials in youtube this is what i go through i mean i i do basically and nothing fancy very simple editing that's what i like and that's how i like to do it just keep things simple whether it's a day ride to your favorite highway chai spot or when you are car okay to get to your favorite yeah for me telling it like one line itself will take at least 6 or 7 takes to see them in the rain for 6 minute video i'll take properly one hour to shoot in <laughs> you need to take extra precautions whether it's a day ride in the rain to get your favorite highway chai spot or you are covering states to see them in the rain you need to take a little bit of extra precautions during monsoon to make your ride memorable so i use like this in and out points and the, the clips that i find are uh, okay to use i'll just drag and drop it into the timeline now timeline because i shot this video in 4k i think uh, by default it'll it'll be in 4k but for the videos that i shoot in uh, action camera in that uh, dj osmo i use uh, 4 is to 3 resolu- i mean ratio aspect ratio that to in 2.7k because at 4k it doesn't have a stabilization in 4 is to 3 ratio so i'll use 4 is to 3 ratio 2.7k recorded and then drop it in the timeline and, and i stretch it to a 4k resolution that's how i do it so uh, if i if i have to if i have to put a clip that is from the action camera to this timeline obviously the timeline will be 2.7k if that's the case i'll come to the sequence settings and uh, change it to 4k so now everything looks okay so that's settings 4k settings and everything at 23.976 frames per second now what i'll go through is i'll go through all these clips and i'll just scrub through it and whatever clips i find it uh, suitable for the edit i'll just drag and drop it down and i'll make a rough cut out of it so after, so i will take you through the next step after i make the rough cut out of it before i go i'll have i have i want to in, import two more videos that is uh, my intro and outro now these both are uh, intro and outro made from uh, presets which i have exported it previously and kept it so these are uh, all these presets i have got from a site called mixkit.com uh, it's absolutely free you'll get presets for everything like uh, title openers call outs and uh, uh, subtitles and all the stuff uh, it's absolutely free 
I will leave the link in the description below. Go check it out. It's a nice, uh, nice website to get all the resources. It's there for Da Vinci, Premiere, uh, Final Cut, and all that. So all the uh, titles and presets I have downloaded downloaded from them. So if you uh, if you want a quick preview of it, this is the intro. So this title preset and this animation I got from Mixkit and I downloaded the sound effects from uh, YouTube from different channels and then I made a short intro like this. So this intro I just drag and drop it here like this as simple as that. If I have to edit something I'll use the preset itself and not use this pre-made video. Okay so I have shortlisted all the clips and I have uh, Drag it onto the timeline. It is just a rough cut of what the video needs to be. And uh, since this is a talking head shot, there is just one camera, uh, uh, like one camera angle. So I don't need to cop, uh, put any videos on top or anything like that. Maybe I'll add a few videos on top of this track uh, just to show me riding through the monsoon and all that, just to break the monotonous character of this video. So now what I'll do is after uh, getting to, to the rough cut, I will go through in each and individual clip and uh, make necessary changes for a, a fine final uh, cut of this uh, whole video. Riders, the long winding western cut routes to the beach routes during the monsoon is a joy to ride during the rain. So like this I'll uh, make fine adjustment to each and every clip and cut and join and all that stuff any repetitions of words uh, especially my words where i stutter because i have stammering so all this all those i need to cut so actually it's a double double job for me uh, editing my video than in, in anyone else's video so after uh, all the cuts are done like after i've done the basic uh, tr cutting and trimming and slicing and all this stuff. I'll add it, add the audio and video transitions to all the clips. Then I'll go to color grading. So first let me finish uh, all the fine editing and then I'll take you through the next steps that I do. So uh, what I usually use is, let me go to the FX tab and audio transitions and then video transitions so for audio transition what i use is a exponential fade i just drag and drop here so as you can see it is overlapping a little bit over the audio so what i'll do is just, just quickly go select just give a small space and then I'll add uh, in the video transition. I will add a dip to black. So it looks something like this. Whether it's a day ride, yeah. And here also, I'll fade to black, dip to black, and add an exponential fade audio transition as well. And then just ripple delete this. So to make your ride memorable. That's how the intro will come. And in the next clip, same thing, exponential. Hey everyone, welcome back to another. Yes, so that's done. Then towards the end, job and then uh, what I like to do is uh, I have the script already so be before the main points I'll have to, like from when I transition from one main point to another point I will uh, put a cross dissolve just to break that monotonous feel. Your monsoon ride memorable. Assuming that you already have yeah so there is one uh, I'll add a cross dissolve memorable assuming that you already have good some people find the cross diesel transition very jarring and very uncomfortable i like it <laughs> so, uh, so that's why i use it 
description below. If you want to know all the games on the i button above. Uh, normally, I don't use writing. Uh -huh. Preferably, you should Basically, opt. This video has three sections. So, the first section has uh, uh, riding gears that you need to have. Second is bike preparation. And third is as a rider, what are uh, the things you need to keep in mind. So in between these three sections, when one section is transitioning to the other, I will put a cross cell transition. Okay, so that's done. All the transitions are done. Now what I do is uh, color grading. Yeah. So for that, uh, there are three steps that I take for color grading. First, uh, I'll uh, color correct it because I shoot in a log profile. So I'll add the uh, needed contrast and all that stuff. Basic correction I'll do. Uh, color cor correct it. Second, I'll color grade it. I have my usual style that I go for. I mean, if you haven't seen already, uh, go to my Instagram uh, profile while you are there give a follow so you will quickly notice that I have uh, quite 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 a similar color theme for all the photos uh, a color scheme that I tend to follow a darker I mean darker green in the shadows and uh, desaturated blues and all that stuff so what I like to do is I like to have the same color theme in my videos as well uh, it doesn't reflect as perfect as a photo but I try to match uh, those so that all my videos and photos uh, uh, have a uniform color palette. So, so, second I do is color color grading, and when I do color grading, obviously the skin tones uh, go off a little bit. So, third thing I'll do is correction of skin tones. So, when I am editing a vlog, uh, or especially a motor vlog, uh, you will have different. Uh, uh, videos in different scenes and different lighting conditions and different everything so I go through each and every clip and cut uh, and then uh, color correct it uh, over that I'll put an adjustment layer and color grade it but since this in this video is just one long shot just one plain shot uh, what I'll do is I'll, click, I'll make an adjustment layer and then uh, color correct it in that so I'll Make a new adjustment layer. This is the first layer. I just drag it. So this layer will be my color grading layer. And then I'll make another adjustment layer. So this layer will be my color. Sorry, first layer will be my color correction layer. Second will be my color grading layer. Okay. And the third uh, adjustment layer would be the skin tones. So those are the three layers that I usually use. So I'll pick a scene like this um, because I shot in a natural light condition. You see the light is varying. I tend not to put too much effort into match the lighting. But if it is too much jarring, then obviously, yes, I'll correct it. So instead of color correcting clip by clip, like how I normally do in a vlog, uh, this one I'll just, it's easy, easy for me because it's a long static shot. Okay, so let's get to the color space. So I use two scopes. Uh, 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 in the, this thing, uh, vector scope and parade. That's the only two things I use. So in color correction, what I normally uh, start with is the uh, curves, RGB curves. So as you can see, I'll just match the highlights and I mean the I'll try to extend the highlights to hundred and the shadows to zero to get contrast. This is the method that, that I've been following for years together. Uh, I learned it from uh, a YouTuber called Sidney Dion. Uh, do check out his channel. Uh, his color grading tutorial is the easiest that I could follow. So that's what I've been doing for years together now. 
as you can see i've added a much of a contrast here so the shadows are now touching the zero and the highlights are now touching almost a uh, hundred okay so now what you can see here is that uh, so this is before and this is after now what you can see here is like a uh, blue is peaking a little bit higher than the red and the green so i'll just try to bring that down uh we don't want to change the mid tones because i think on the mid tones everything seems to be uniform only the highlights blue is little bit overpowering so that's about right now if you can closely see there's a red peaking peaking over here so even that i will uh bring it a little bit down while bringing the blues down i think the main highlights yeah now it is matching okay and now the red uh i will go up i'll make a point in the middle so that i'm not entirely reducing the mid tones and the shadows and everything i'll just drop the highlight down a bit see now you can see this below zero is not so now it's not clipping so and in shadows i'll go a bit a little bit further down so it's almost touching and blues also i'll uh, a little bit come down so more than my eyes i trust the scopes <laughs> because first of all the lighting in the room is not very proper so that can reflect in your uh, i mean that can uh, alter your perception of color uh, when while editing the footage most of the time what i noticed is when i edit the footage with this, with, with this lighting and it appears so warm so i'll make it everything cool and uh, when i export it and play it back in my laptop or on my phone it's it looks very bluish and all that stuff so that's why i trust the vectors more than uh, what i see over here and when you're color grading for a long period of time you kind of become like color blind uh, you will become blind to the small small changes that you are making in the colors so it's better to go with the help of scopes right here so i think that's basic of the color correction and that's done now we'll go to the color grading part Now when it comes to color grading that style I look for uh is something like this I'll make three points on the red and the green as well now this uh style of color grading or color grading with curves I learned it from a YouTube from a YouTube channel called Bicky and Chris I'm sure you you might know it uh they make great amazing videos and I love their color tones and their color picture uh, that that is constant throughout their instagram handles and the youtube videos so this is what i follow uh i tend to bring the reds down a bit in the shadows so that the shadow is more of greenish kind of get greenish hues and i'll compensate by bringing the greens down a little bit so that we'll get a neutral or a slight pinkish So here's the before and here's the after. A slight change you can see the kind of a green texture around the hair and the uh, darker side of the uh jacket. So that's pretty much it. That's what I do for the color grading part and in this layer itself I'll add uh a little bit of vibrance like a 30 or 40 is good yeah then i try to stick to the colors i mean try to try to stick the colors inside of this broadcast value ring so vibrant 40 and sharpen i tend to go 55 uh because i don't sharpen it inside the camera and then i'll add a little bit of vignette just to get the focus towards 
me I'll feather it a little bit before after there is no fixed value which I follow just uh, move around uh, and depending upon the scene uh, you finalize what you feel like uh, what do you think it is good so that is basically it and uh, that is a correction that I use anything am I missing anything else no I think that is pretty much it so this is without the color grading as you can see this is without the color grading and this is with the color grading now from scratch if you see this is the raw footage this is after the color correction and this is after the color grading now as you can see the skin tones are a little off now we come to the skin tone so when I come to the skin tone oh yes I forgot I forgot back to the color grading part ah. I tend to desaturate the highlights and the shadows doesn't make much of a difference but it does like if I switch it off you can see that high parts have a tint and uh, blackest black has a tint so if I switch it on that is desaturated black looks like black and white looks like white and I like desaturated tones so what I do is if any I mean desaturated blues so what I do is I notice some blue tinge here no that is green Yeah, so I'll just desaturate it so it looks so the jacket looks a little black. So this is before the jacket has a bluish tinge. Now this is after jacket looks more black. I don't want to completely desaturate it, but let it be there. Yeah, that is the color correction part. Now come, come color grading part. Now coming to the skin tones. So let's choose the color. I'll give it a color gray, and then keep selecting. So now that it has selected most of my face and a uh, little bit of the background painting as well I don't mind that I'll just denoise it a bit blur a bit and now you can see it is almost in the line uh, of the skin tone this is the skin tone line it is almost in the line only but I'll just uh, go tend little bit towards the red side yeah so I think that's perfect and I'll increase the highlight on the face uh, I usually sharpen the face a little extra like around 15 and desaturate the face around 90 switch off the color gray and this is what it looks before and that is what it looks after this is getting a little bit annoying now so I might as well put a mask so if I take the color gray option it's just doing the correction to my face so now you don't have that uh, what do you say fringing happening in the walls yep now it's just affecting only my face that's better good thing I decided to go with the mask so again to show you guys the difference straight out of the camera color graded color corrected color graded and finally skin tone adjusted come on save so that's how I go about color grading now uh, next thing I do is the audio so what I have done is I have created a preset for the audio 
Uh, so I'll just randomly copy paste that. Uh, first, I'll correct the audio levels. Now, in the I tend to mostly when I'm shooting like head to head. Uh, I mean, uh, single take like this. What I try to do maximum is correct the level of the audio in the camera itself. So uh, if you can see the audio peaks, it is not clipping anywhere. It's correct at the level. I'll not do anything. If the audio level is too low, I'll I'll increase the gain of this audio. So that it will, uh, uh, I mean, it it comes just below the peaking level, and if it's already peaking, I'll try to reduce the gain a little bit. So now it, it this looks perfect to me. So I just leave it like that. So what I do with the audio is I'll go to F A. Okay, I'll go to F X presets and uh, Sony vlogging. This is the preset that I put. So I'll just drag and drop, drag and drop this. I'll just show you guys what's happening in the preset in a bit. I'll select all the clips and just put it like this. Okay. In the rain, you need to take a. In the EQ, I'll put vocal enhancer preset. That size parts work perfect. Or your cover. Only thing is, there on the 200 to 300 range, I'll I'll dip a little bit more. Covering states to see them in the rain, you need to take a little bit of. So this is with the EQ. Ride in the rain to get your favorite highway size part. Or your cover without the EQ. Covering states to see them in the rain, you need to take a little bit of extra precautions so it'll cut off all the boomy sound and it'll make the it boost the high so it'll become a little more crisp so that's what i do in the uh, eq then the third second thing i do is denoise uh, the stock 40% is enough for most of the case okay anyway chai spot or your covering states to that output noise is less but whatever is there it'll cut it off memorable then the third thing is single band compressor i'll leave it in the vocal leveler preset in the rain to get your favorite highway chai spot or your covering states to see them in the rain you need to take a little bit of extra not vocal boost anyway precautions during voice over is fine voice over sounds good a ride in the rain to get your favorite highway chai spot Are your covering states to see them in the rain. You need to take a little bit of extra precautions during monsoon to make your ride. Vocal thickener also sounds nice. Yeah, so I leave it like like that. I'll just copy. Ah, no. Okay, I'll just copy this and paste this attribute to all other clips. A chai during the monsoon. It takes you on a different. Now the next thing I what I do is I'll go to the audio track mixer, window workspaces, audio. I will insert uh, this. I'll insert a multiband compressor. Actually, this works much better when you have uh, audio clips. With low volume, some with high volume, and all that stuff. Especially when you're vlogging outside, when you're traveling, and all that stuff. Some at certain places you speak slowly because you'll be surrounded by people. At certain places you'll be shouting. This multiband compressor does a job of leveling uh, all those noises very well. So I usually keep the threshold at minus eight or minus ten, and the margin at minus two, so that it'll not go over minus two decibels. Hi. I'm sure everyone watching this video would be imagining their experience riding during the monsoon. The compressor. And if you haven't already, it's high time you experience it. This is without the compressor. I mean, yeah. The long winding western cut routes to the beach routes during the monsoon is a joy to ride during the rain. So compressor, what it basically does is it cuts down high volume uh, to a little bit of lower volume, and it. Boost the lower volume, so basically the difference between the high, highest of the highs and the lows of the lows in the audio uh, will be less. That's what compressor does. And then when I do come do compress uh, after adding the vocal tracks and all that stuff, 
it might um, i mean cross 0 db and it might clip so i'll just add a limiter also hard limiter and i keep it uh, db to minus 3 preset and to top it all off the highway chai during the monsoon it takes you on a different high so so that's what i do with the audio for everyone okay so that's done i'll come back to the editing workspace for watching this video would be imagining their experience riding during the monsoon so this is the edited video that you can see uh edited audio that you can hear and if you haven't already it's high time you experience it as good as it sounds monsoon riding this is the audio that straight out inside out of the camera and un- un- unedited due to their smaller size than the trucks and the cars and due to general low visibility because of rain and foggy conditions so it becomes your responsibility to make your presence known use indicators that's the audio that's coming out of the camera now it's edited audio it has its own risk and has a higher level of risk than riding on any other normal day i'll share with you some few tips that you need to take to make your monsoon ride memorable As- it is crisp it is not muffled it is compressed overall it sounds better assuming that you already have uh, in all turnings good quality riding okay so that's done audio is done next thing i will do is titles and the last thing i'll do is add background music uh usually i'll add background music uh if it is a vlog style video i'll add background music uh, uh, much earlier because i'll I want to edit the video according to the background music. Uh, I mean, for the video is fast paced, I have to add a fast paced music and then chop it out, cut it up according to the music. Uh, and uh, usually, I edit vlogs like that. But since this is a straightforward uh, single uh, shot kind of video, I'll just put one uh, song repeatedly and just uh, keep it low, muffled to play in the background. Now that the editing, color, and the audio enhancement is done, so next I'll move on to. the titles so i'll move on to the captions and graphics workspace in here i have a list of all the titles uh presets that i've downloaded from mixkit so i'm going to use now for this titles the this one that is prebuilt i mean inbuilt with a premiere the one that i use the most often so i'm going to use that So by default, the font, uh, the font of this, uh, this thing is Trajan Pro regular. For some reason, it doesn't uh, recognize the font that is already installed. So I have to every time go and select this. So title will be Monsoon Riding Tips. Yeah, that looks good. First section. I'll just copy this, paste it here. Remember, assuming that you already have good quality riding gears, the next thing you need are good quality r- change the alignment. Include this background. Change the background color to black. and uh, the outline to somewhere around 25 and the curvature to somewhere around 35 yes and this would be uh, rain gears adequate rain gears that's the first point and again copy and paste
last but not the least the like and subscribe button i'll have a preset for that as well download from mix kit just drag and drop it here towards the end video i hope you guys liked it i hope you guys take all the necessary precautions and enjoy this i'll just use the fx control to place it a uh, oh sorry place it little bit below yeah that should be fine bam bam soon going for a few rides i'll see you guys next saturday bye bye okay so our three titles are done let's check the spelling check the weather forecast beforehand okay next thing i'll do is add background music now i have gone to our audio library and downloaded a song from there i'll show you audio library is the channel that i go to for all, like almost 90% of my music needs so i have downloaded this uh, future awaits and it is copyright it's copyright free so that's a good part about it i'll just import that so i'll just drag and drop the entire song so now to go into the transitions uh fx audio transitions cross fade exponential fade i'll just drag and drop it here first or else just wait let me make uh, two copies of it since this uh talk talking head video is not i mean i don't really edit, edit, this, edit these kind of videos to the beat so I'm, i'll just drag and drop this audio clip to the track and then uh i uh, do the editing i mean uh, edit it last but usually when i uh, edit a vlog or something like that i'll i'll first and itself i'll uh, drop the audio i'll select the audio ac according to the mood and theme of the video i'll drop the audio in the track and i'll edit this these clips the rough cuts of the main video according to the beat of the track okay, so since this video is just uh, me talking to the camera uh straight and a long shot uh, i i don't edit it uh, to the beat of the song i don't need to do that so i just copy paste the song and just uh, make two copies of it over the final edited uh, video but if i am editing a vlog uh, and uh, doing that kind of videos i will first select the song according, according to the theme and mood of the video if uh, the theme and theme of the mood of the video changes changes in the in a particular video i'll select uh, two or three songs according to that mood and uh, then i will uh, pick, uh, keep the audio track uh, for uh, first in the timeline and edit these uh, video uh, clips according to the beat of the audio so that's what i usually do now i don't need to do that i don't, I don't need to edit to the beat of the audio so i just drag and drop this audio so the vlogs uh, especially the action camera footage and all uh, i will edit i mean after taking a rough clips and uh, from the uh, uh, source clip to the timeline the final cut in the timeline i will edit it according to the beat of the video beat of the audio sorry so now i'll just go and paste the exponential fade here whether it's a day or ride okay so and i'll place an exponential fade out at the end and both the audio clips gain i will make it to minus 8 that's the nice cut off that i like to have and in the intro i'll just make two cuts here this is the intro clip i'll take make two cuts and then add a audio transition that is constant power bring the gain back to i mean not zero but minus two at least and in all other videos what i do is i have a preset made 
that is voice over bgm dip okay so this this is a, just a simple parametric eq uh, with a dip i mean with a minus 12 db dip uh, at around 1250 hertz that's the sweet spot where i mean most of the mid tones of my voice lies so uh, that uh, uh, frequency range i made a minus 12 db dip so that uh, uh, the mid tones will be concentrated with my voice and but i'll, I'll not sacrifice the bass and the high end of the background music that is there so with the music and with, without the eq and with the eq i'll show you the difference this is without the eq ride in the rain to get your favorite highway chai spot or you are covering states to see them in the rain you need to take a little bit of extra precaution now with the eq ride in the rain to get your favorite highway chai spot or you are covering states to see them in the rain you need to take a little bit of extra precautions so you notice the drop in the mid uh, mid frequency of the music where my voice is so uh the music doesn't overpower the voice but the high the high hats and the bass is not a uh, cut off also completely so that's what i'll do It sound something like this for a few rides i'll see you guys next saturday bye bye see that audio comes up now i want to add a few clips to this uh even the initial when i am telling about mansoor riding and all that so what i have done is i'll go back to the mid project i have downloaded one of my earlier videos last year july when i went to chikmagalur uh train the tracks that that's the first time i attended the train the tracks uh, event train the trails event where i chickened out because i got like around 30 i think 40 leech bites so i'll take that video in that nice monsoon shots are there with that i took it in my old camera firefly so yeah this is the one so why i put this video on top of all the other color grading and adjustments and everything is that is already color graded footage that i have uploaded to youtube and then i don't have the original files of uh, let me exported files of these videos so i just downloaded it, it from youtube now so i don't want to apply any color grading or effects on top of it i just want to leave it like that raw <laughs> so that is it i think yeah necessary clips have been put video is done now what i do is uh now now is come to the export section uh okay i'll go to file export media i'll name i'll usually name the file uh according to the topic as well and i later changed the name of the file to the actual title of the youtube channel before i mean youtube video before uploading it because it helps in seo it seems so yeah that's what going to do so i'm have to come up with the title now mm. okay and i use a preset for my export that is uh, I have saved it as vlog export settings 4K. So these are the settings that I go through. It's format is H.264 MP4 format, and in video I say uh, uh, 4K resolution like the uh, raw footage itself, and then uh, 
more if you click it render at maximum depth right use maximum render quality is there then uh, others uh, level is 5.2 uh, uh, i've seen uh, chris how another youtube that i follow his video where he like, explains why you have to use 5.2 instead of 4.1 the normal 4.1 Uh, so I use that. Only thing is I cannot use hardware encoding while using that. Only software encoding works in that. Second thing is VBR2 pass with target bitrate 40 and maximum 60. This is according to the YouTube specifications. YouTube likes uh, uh, the 4K resolution videos to be around 50 something kbps. So as an average, we take minimum of 40 and have maximum 60. uh audio obviously 3320 kk uh, kbps bit rate with 48000 hertz sample rate that's pretty much it that's the only thing i do uh for the entire this thing the estimated file size is around 1.8 gb uh for a 6 minute video now uh, i don't normally export it through premiere pro because uh, i need to make an instagram story for that as well which i'll edit in, edit in a 9 by 16 resolution so i'll do i mean i'll send it to media encoder and let it do the job and media encoder does a good job i mean it exports faster than premiere pro also yep it has sent to media encoder and now start so that's how easy it is and uh, while you are using uh, i mean while it is exporting my video i can go back to premiere pro's project and make a instagram story for this video now how do i do it i'll show you i will make a new sequence sequence settings no uh, file new sequence custom settings frames per second and return 23.976 that's it now when it comes to frame size it will be 1080 into 1920 so that will be a 9s to 16 resolution for instagram everything else is same okay now i'll uh, open the two timelines like uh, one above the other like this i will drag and drop the intro part of it Whether it's a day ride in the rain to get your favorite highway chai spot, or you are covering states to see them in the rain, you need to take a little bit of extra precautions during monsoon to make your ride memorable. Yeah, so that video is good in good enough for intro. I'll just copy, drag it to here. Same thing. I, I'll I'll cut all the adjustment layers. and then copy paste them to i'll go back to the sequence timeline i'll make a, a mark around 15 seconds because that's what the standard instagram this thing is right story No, I think now it is thirty seconds almost. Let's see. I'll just cut short the intro a little bit because you don't need that much that much time in Instagram stories. a marker in 15 seconds i'll just adjust the uh position a little bit scale i'll reduce it to 89 and then uh, i'll adjust the position a little bit i'll make it center yeah 
that looks okay command save and then I have a preset for this uh, uh, this also I got it from mix kit where is it where is it where is it yes this I'll drag and drop it here I'll extend this music a little more Keeper, constant power, uh, this thing, and then like edit for the outro of the main video. I'll delete the parametric EQ and bring the gain back up to minus two. Okay, so it'll sound like this. The rain, you need to take a little bit of extra precautions during monsoon to make your ride memorable. Yes, that's it. 15 seconds of story. So I can export this also now. No, it's not 4K. For this, I use the match source adaptive uh, high bitrate and then I go down to video more and render at maximum depth and maximum quality. Uh, I let the VBR pass be like this, one pass only by default. Change the file name to Monsoon Tips IG. Done. So once this main video gets over, I mean the rendering is over, it will automatically start rendering the next uh, Instagram one also. I don't have to wait uh, like in Premiere Pro for the first video to finish exporting fully and then uh, oh, uh, come back to the sequence and export it, export the next uh, video again. So this, uh, I mean media encoder will do the job. That's why I use media encoder. It is nice. So that's how I write the script of the video. Come, I mean, initially I come up with an idea, write down the idea, write down the script of, script of the video, then I go about shooting the video and then editing it and finally exporting it. And after exporting, I'll just upload to YouTube. Then it's all about titles, thumbnails. Yeah, thumbnail I edit mostly in Canva. Uh, sometimes I use Photoshop, but mostly like 90% of the time I use Canva. Uh, and uh, then I'll upload a thumbnail also for uh, th I mean thumbnail as well in uh, this thing and uh, finally tags and all the stuff in YouTube and the usual normal how I up up upload in YouTube that's it I'll schedule it to 7 o'clock Saturday uh, uh, night 7 p.m. so that's how I go about doing all of my videos so thank you guys for joining uh, and uh, uh, for all those who made it till the last of the video, good job. <laughs> so if in, if you have any, any doubts, anything, uh, any comments, any suggestions, you can uh, drop them in the comments below. I would love to uh, read it and improve myself. And this is how I, how I go about editing a simple video. Everything is simple, nothing fancy about it. So thank you for joining. I'll see you guys next Saturday uh, with another video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.